Just got a package. It's got some gold spray paint RS on it. Hmm. Let's see what it is. What's that say? Since you're, well, it's replacing. I think that's what I got. I don't know. That's what you told him. Yeah. All right. So this is how a 16 meter drift air comes from the factory. It comes with this bag, which I actually like this bag. I use it for paragliding. This is like a double bag. It comes with a stuff sack. Especially when you didn't know it was going to be today. Yeah. A little drawstring backpack. Hat. Windsock. Speed bar. Package with lines, inserts, uh, stickers, a streamer. So I'm surrounded by wings here warp 16 meter drift air 16 meter drift air i got three 16 meter wings with me right now and i'm adjusting my brake line length and i'm also switching out to these custom toggles that i like to use um trading out the drift air toggles and i thought i'd just make a quick video to show you how i um, change brake line length or swap toggles or whatever so right here see this little it's kind of hard to show up on camera that little black dot on the brake line there so that's the factory brake line marker and from kiting the other 16 meter drift air and uh, playing with the brake line length i learned that i like the to lengthen this when i switch to my custom toggles i like to lengthen the main brake line two inches and so if you think your brake lines need to be shortened or lengthened, just start out moving like one inch or maybe two inches at a time. And then I get a ruler, just a normal ruler, and I basically measure exactly two inches on this line right here, and I make a second black dot. And then I tie my brake line in um, on that second black dot that you marked. And that way you can be very accurate with your brake line length and you make sure that you um, have them both the same length on, on your left and your right toggle um, so you don't mess up anything. And then you can always put it back to the factory length or if you want to add another inch or two. Um, so test fly it, kite it first, and then if it's still too long or too short, you just measure another inch out, mark it again with a marker, and then retie it. And um, I'll tie this brake line on video and show you guys how I do that. So here I have my new mark. What I do is I take the line and I just do a normal, I don't know, what do they call this, a bow, a bow knot. Alright, so put the bow knot, it's best if you put it kind of like in the middle, the dot that you've made, right? About just like that. Go through the toggle, like so. Follow this other line that's already there. So you're gonna pass through, loop around just like this. And then you're gonna pass it through both of those holes, like so. Then when you tighten it up, it'll just look like a really fat bowline knot. That's what it should look like when it's tightened up. See on both sides, pretty much the same. And then you want to get rid of this slack, right? So before you tighten the knot all the way, you just push the knot, just kind of work it, and push all this extra line through 
to tighten it up best you can. And you can see I didn't get it perfect, right? So I'm short about, I don't know, half inch to an inch there. So what I do to fix this before I really tighten the knot down is I push this line, push it in to where I want it, okay? That's where I want it. And now I just slowly work the knot to push the line through the knot little by little and this just takes some patience and some time to work it out to uh, to get it where I want it so I got it a little bit closer that time and I'm just gonna do that again there we go so I've just kinda worked the knot to get the dot just up against the knot there that's close enough for me and uh, I've got the knot nice and tight Give it a tug, make sure it's not going to loosen up. And then the last step, the last thing that I do just to make sure this knot's going to come loose is I just go around the string and do one more bow knot. And I cinch it down right up on top of that other knot. Just above it. Like that. Just to make sure that this is not going to come untied. This is how I tie all my brake lines. And I've never had one loosen up on me or come undone or slide or anything and um, after this I'm gonna basically take this line here and I'm gonna throw some stitching you can see my old stitching there but I put the line in the middle and then I throw some stitching over it once I know the brake line length is good and I do that so that when I use the toggle like this I get a little bit more tip pull without pulling any mean brake line so you get a little bit of extra control this way and if you don't do the stitching, then sometimes these lines, they slide up the toggle like that. So I pull them down, and I throw a couple stitches across there just by hand with a needle and thread. And that holds them down nice and good. And uh, yeah, these are the toggles for my warp. If you have 2D steering and you want a, a little bit more control, you can try this out. I really, I really like these toggles. I also like the stiff inserts. Some people don't like them, but... I prefer the, the stiff insert. I think it works well with a throttle because I run my whole hand through here and then I have the throttle on here as well. And so uh, it doesn't interfere. Some people like the two finger method. Usually two finger people use the throttle with just your ring finger and pinky finger. But I prefer a whole hand through the toggle and then do the throttle like this. Personal preference, try, try both and see what you prefer. And then, uh, yeah, go for it. But... If you need to adjust your brake lines, that's how you do it. Hope this helps someone.